Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Kingdom Hearts 3 Chain of Memories. In the last episode, I got a new set of four world cards, and I'm going to play Neverland as my first card here, mainly because you get an ability at the beginning of the level that can be used later on to make things easier. It can be used to make fights easier, but that's not even really why I want to get it right now. It's going to be used to get a treasure chest later on, and you might be thinking, but there's no treasure chests in this game unless you make them. That will change. Where are we now? The floor is kind of unsteady. I can hear the ocean, too. I know, we must be inside a ship. Well, we'd better find a way out. But which way do we go? Whack! Who are you? Maybe she's trying to help us. Looks like you're right. Now here's that ability I was talking about earlier, which is very familiar to players of the first game, Glide. But even though it's familiar, it's not as useful as it was in the first game, in my opinion. Mainly because you never learn super glides, so you're always going to be gliding at that very, very snail-like pace which makes it really not useful at all for trying to evade enemies. But over here, I'm going to open up a Moogle shop, and I just happen to have a 1, so it seems like every time I want to open a Moogle shop, I just happen to have the right exact value. But I'm going to try and get through Neverland without getting in any enemy fights except for the boss fights. Now, that means opening up a lot of Calm Bounty rooms and, of course, Moogle shop rooms. But from the Moogle shop, there's a 5. I want to try and get a lot of 4s and 5s, and I might as well point out that there are two new types of packs here. The one that I'm opening right now that has a, it looks like a belt. And then the other two that kind of also look like belts, but I guess those are orange. And they are, of course, of lesser value. Of course, the higher value packs are supposed to give you better cards. But in my experience, I'm always getting trolled by the Moogle shops. And I hardly ever get what I want. But there is a five. Basically, I want to try and get fours and fives to build a deck that relies on the ability Blitz, because that does a lot of damage, and if you pair it with that Jafar enemy card, you'll probably never get broken. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a Calm Bounty room here, and what do you know, I just have to happen to have the exact value of the door that it was asking for, but I'm not entirely sure if there is a unique slight in Neverland or not, but I guess we're gonna find out here. Teleport which apparently requires two magic cards and an item card. I will probably never be using that. It seems like there's a lot of slights in this game that they thought would be useful, but they're not really that useful, and I feel like there's other slights that they didn't intend to be really useful that are. But, of course, another plot room. Is it just me, or are all the rooms starting to look the same? <laughs> Maybe we're just going in circles. Some help she was. I think you might have ruffled her feathers, Donald. Tink, what are you doing? You weren't supposed to bring the pirates with you. Stay back, pirates. Or this will be the last fight you pick. What's the big idea? We're not pirates. We're only here because... Uh, why are we here, Sora? Huh? How am I supposed to know, Donald? Goofy, what do you think? Gorch beats me. Okay, okay, I understand. Sora, Donald, and Goofy, right? I guess if you were real pirates, you wouldn't get lost on your own ship. Plus, you're dressed funny. There you go again! Wait, so if you thought we were pirates, this must be a pirate ship. That's right, you're trapped inside the Jolly Roger. Ship of the old codfish, Captain Hook. Well, if we're trapped, that means you are too. Me, don't be silly. No one can capture Peter Pan. I'm just laying low until it's time to spring my plan. What plan is that? The pirates kidnapped my friend Wendy. She's gotta be somewhere on this ship. 
I didn't expect there to be so many pirates on watch, though. I sent Tink to look for a way around. But all she found was you. I bet I know what Tink had in mind. If we all make a big enough racket, we can distract the pirates. Gorsh, you must have read her mind. So how about it? Let's work together, at least until we get above deck. Well, why not? Of course, I could save Winnie myself if I wanted to, but you guys look like you'd be stuck without me. Don't you have any manners? Of course, Peter Pan being Peter Pan, but also you might have realized or might have recognized the fact that the whole let's make a distraction thing was already used in Monstro. Luckily, we're not going to have another one of those types of fights, but I don't know why everything is always let's make a distraction. That'll, you know, whatever. However, somehow that always fixes all the problems, but I'm going to go ahead and open up yet another Moogle room, even though I've already opened one on this floor, mainly because, like I said before, I'm looking for those fours and fives, to try and make that blitz deck, or that's what I'm gonna call it anyway. So hopefully we get what I want here. Man, two five cards in one pack. I can't say I'm too disappointed with that, considering that is exactly what I wanted from the Moogle Shop in the first place. But unfortunately, yeah, I didn't think so. I was going to say maybe we'll get enough Moogle points from those boxes to get enough to buy that last pack in the shop, but unfortunately not. And luckily, all we have to play is a green card to open this plot door. There she is! Peter! Peter Pan! Wendy, are you alright? I've come to rescue you with my three new lost boys! Come on, let's get off this leaky old tub and do some exploring! Haha, <laughs> we'll never grow up! Listen, Peter, I've got something to tell you! I want to go home to London! What are you talking about? Why would you want to do that? You'd have to turn into a grown-up! Besides, going on adventures is a lot more fun. If you go back to London, you'll have to leave the nursery. You'll grow up, and we'll never see each other again. I know, Peter, but I still want to go home. I came to rescue you, and you don't care if you ever see me again. No, you don't understand. Suit yourself, and while you're at it, rescue yourself. I'm leaving. Hey, wait a minute! There he goes! Peter! Not very thoughtful, is he? What do we do now? Hey, I've got an idea! Why don't we think of something once we get up on deck? That doesn't make any sense, I think. Well, there's still trouble waiting outside. Wendy, you stay here. We'll try to create a distraction. Alright, be careful. Maybe if you stay here, Peter will change his mind and come back. I feel like now might be a perfect time to go ahead and create that new deck that I've been talking about. Mainly because there's a boss fight coming up that I've always had trouble with in the past. And I feel like the deck that I want to create would make it a lot easier. So let me go ahead and create it and I will meet you guys back here and explain it just a little bit. Alright, I put together that deck that I wanted to make, and it worked out fairly well, because in this very episode, I've gotten a bunch of cards that made it better. Now, I put a bunch of fives and fours, a potion, a high potion, and this Jafar card, and once I really get cooking and get into a fight, you'll be able to see fairly clearly why this deck is pretty much just gonna wipe the floor with any enemy that we get into a fight with. But first of all, let me just say that if you make a new deck, Make sure that you always equip the deck that you created, because I can't tell you how many times I've made a deck and either just not equipped it, or maybe even equipped the wrong deck. But I'm going to go ahead and open up a moment's reprieve room here for a couple of reasons that I think I might have talked about in a previous episode. But basically, I really don't like to have to backtrack to the area between the previous world and whatever world I'm currently in, just to either save 
or replenish my HP. And considering that there is a hard boss coming up, it's kind of a good thing to save and replenish your HP before you fight it. And it's kind of funny because I really don't plan on dying at all during this let's play, so saving doesn't really matter to me as much, but if I were playing for real, I usually save about every 5 seconds every time I play a Kingdom Hearts game or whatever, or really any game. Final Fantasy, every time there's a save spot, I might save twice just to be sure that I actually save, because I've had one too many mishaps happen with not saving. But I opened up another Calm Bounty room here, hopefully this is yet another slight. Unfortunately not, but we got a zero fairy harp there, and the reason I even had I entertained the thought of it being another slight is because I seem to remember some levels on the Game Boy Advance actually having more than one slight in the room. But this is going to be the little bit of a cutscene right before the boss fight, and you guys are definitely not going to want to miss that boss fight. Woo, we finally made it out! There you are, you rascals! I'll teach you to play stowaway on my ship! Friends of Peter Pan, I'll wager. Are we his friends? He sure didn't seem to think so. Yeah, the way he took off like that, he even ditched Wendy. I'm not finished talking yet! How dare you ignore me and plot behind my back, uncivilized brats! You're in cahoots with Peter Pan, no mistake! If you say so, either way, you're gonna let us off this ship. And Wendy's coming with us. Think again, you scallywags, Hook's one step ahead of you. Any trouble and Wendy takes a long walk off the plank. You wouldn't. Believe me, I'd rather not. After all, I need Wendy to bait that blasted Peter Pan. Then I'll just have to take the bait, you old codfish. Peter! Here I am, Hook. Miss me? Insolent brat, today is the day you pay for taking my hand. You've made a fool of me for the last time, Pan. I'll cleave you to the brisket. We can immediately begin the blitz technique because it will absolutely wipe the floor with Peter, not Peter Pan, with Captain Hook, as I've said before. But I'm not a, I think it's pretty obvious I'm not British, but I could be wrong. Is cleave it to the brisket a saying that might be used in Britain? I have no idea. But Captain Hook has a, an attack, or not an attack, an enemy card. It might even be the Captain Hook enemy card, I'm not entirely sure. But what it does is make every single one of his cards a zero card. And that might not sound like a bad thing, considering that you could easily just, you know, break a zero card, but when he has a constant barrage of zero cards, that's when things get a little bit hairy, and it actually becomes fairly difficult to fight. See, he played it right there. I didn't see, I didn't catch what, exactly what enemy card he used, but I think it might be his own enemy card. But if we play the Jafar card, that doesn't even matter, because he won't be able to break any of our attacks, much less our really powerful Blitz attacks. So, specifically for Peter Pan, or for the Captain Hook fight, I really recommend having this Jafar card just to combat that one little thing. And you might have also seen the Barrel Blast attack or whatever, and that was an awesome way to take him out, but that Barrel Blast attack goes on for probably like two minutes. So you better have a zero card just waiting to take out that slight. Otherwise, you're going to be there for a long time. Thanks, Peter. We owe you one. Well, at first I thought I'd let you handle it, but it really looked like you needed help. But hey, you three did pretty good, though. Wendy, about London. Are you sure you won't change your mind? 
Peter, I'm sorry, but I really want to go home. I was afraid of that. Everybody grows up, and grown-ups always forget. First you'll forget what it feels like to be young, and then you'll forget about me. How can you say such a thing, Peter? I'll never, ever forget you! Sure, that's what you think now, but when you try to remember me, the memories will be gone. You'll forget, little by little, one memory at a time. Once you're grown up, there won't be a single memory left. Don't say that! Memories, even important ones, don't come back to us whenever we want them to. But that doesn't mean the memories are gone, it's more like, like they're sleeping. So when the right thing comes along and wakes the memory up, we can remember it. The memories engraved in our hearts never go away, I'm sure of it. He's right, Peter. Never, huh? It's funny. I thought everybody who left Neverland forgot all about it. But I have a feeling you guys just might be different. Okay, Sora, if you say we'll meet again, then I believe you. Oh, Peter. Let's go, Wendy. London is waiting. Goodbye, Sora. I'll be waiting to see what you look like all grown up. What's the matter, Tink? This must be a gift from Peter. Maybe he's not such a thoughtless guy after all. Ow! Another gift from Peter? What's the big idea? I think The Walking Dead video game, and yes, I have played that to absolute death, but I think The Walking Dead video game may have just spoiled me as far as feeling really vivid emotions in games, but as far as all the levels go in Kingdom Hearts Reach Into Memories, I think that Neverland might be the one that gets the most emotional rise out of me, I guess. I'm not gonna say it's, you know, I'm sitting here crying or anything, but I felt the most feelings, I guess, playing through this level. But of course I need to save, and of course, there's going to be yet another cutscene. No. You're... Riku. No. What are you doing here? Not happy to see me? Let me know if I'm getting in the way. You know, of something that's more important. Huh? I didn't mean that. <laughs> Spare the excuses, I bet, that you had all but forgotten about me. Are you crazy? Come on, I came all this way looking for you. But you're not anymore, right? Now it's only Namine that you're looking for. You don't care about me, just like you never cared. At all. About her feelings. Namine's? <laughs> I knew it. Never even gave it a thought, did you? Just cause you want to see Namine. Sorry. Doesn't go both ways. Tell you the truth, Namine doesn't even want to look at your face. Why not? You should ask your memories. Why Namine disappeared from the islands. Remember that, and you'd know. Did I... Did I do something? Is it my fault? Riku. Go home, Sora. I'll care for Namine. Anyone who goes near her... ...goes through me! What's... what's wrong with you? We're supposed to be friends! Please, Sora. Since when have you ever cared about me? Namine's not the only one who's sick of looking at you. So am I. Riku, stop it!
If you've never played this game before, I would completely understand your feelings right now about what is exactly happening. But Riku is not that hard of a boss fight. I know a lot of people have a lot of trouble with this fight, and I know that because I had a lot of trouble with him the first time playing through the game, because I had no concept of the idea of having a deck completely built around a slight. When I played the game a long time ago, it was like, oh, I just happened to get a Blitz. Now it's like a specific deck dedicated towards that attack, and to me, it's almost like the Final Fantasy VIII junctioning system, because you can break it fairly easily. And I hope that you will excuse that pun. Anyway, I think that Riku may be a little bit easier than Captain Hook, even though he might look a little bit harder at first glance. And the reason I say he's easier is because Blitz seems to do so much more damage to Riku, and he's clearly already dead, and I don't know how many times he even hit me. I'm not even sure that he hit me one time. So if you use this technique, you probably won't die either. Riku, where are you? Sora, are you okay? Don't worry about me. Riku, what happened? Hmm, sure was strange. Almost like Ansem was back, controlling Riku again. But we got rid of Ansem for good. Then I wonder what is wrong with Riku. Hold on, the kid. If he's with Riku, he might be in danger. Sora? I know. You're thinking Riku isn't your friend. But that's just not true. You sure? Well, I know he said some awful things to you back there. But you gotta remember, we are in Castle Oblivion. Why folks lose their memory here a little bit at a time. Riku's probably just forgotten that the two of you were such close friends. That's all. So he just forgot? My guess is that's so. But Sora, instead of being sad, we have to figure out a way to help Riku get his memory back. If we all work together, why, we're sure to get you through this. No need to mow. Jiminy's right. You shouldn't push your friends away. Yeah. Okay. Sora? Do you remember our very first promise? Huh? Always smile. smile! That was the promise we made to each other the first time we met. We promised to never forget to keep smiling. <sighs> You're right. I believe this episode may have the most new plot developments, if you will, of any episode that I've done in the series so far. But we will definitely learn more about Vexen, Larxene, Riku, Axel, the whole organization thing going on here. We will definitely be learning about that more as the game progresses. But I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Reaching of Memories, and I can't wait to see you guys back for the next episode.